And David Kahn here with a question from the Question Bank in topic 9.3 Interference. We're looking at uh, thin film interference. Uh, this question is about the formulation of colored fringes when white light is reflected from thin films. I want to name the phenomenon that's responsible for the formation of regions of different color when the white light is reflected from a thin film. Um, well, before I give you the answer to that, let's quickly take a look at why we get different colors from, from thin films. Uh, so here's like a, a layer of oil on top of a layer of water. Oops, peek at the answer there. Uh, when light of a particular color comes in and it strikes this boundary between the air and the oil, uh, the light can do one of two things. It can be transmitted or reflected. And some of the photons of light will, will do one, and some of them will do the other. So uh, we're going to get light coming up off the surface of the air as a reflection. Or it may get transmitted into the oil and reflect again off the uh, interface between the oil and the water. Now, some of it will also be transmitted into the water as well, but we'll kind of ignore what happens after that, because we'll say that the water is, is thick enough that we're not going to get a thin film interference based on whatever bounces off the bottom of the water. The key here though is recognizing that we have light of the same wavelength traveling in the same direction but from two different places. And that means that the path difference is going to be different. Some of the light comes from the surface of the water and goes up. And some of the light comes from the surface of the water bounces down and then bounces back up. And so the path that the light that goes into the oil takes is twice that thickness. And if that path relates to a whole wavelength, then you get constructive interference. And if it relates to a half a wavelength, you get destructive interference. So what is the phenomenon? It's interference. Specifically, it's thin film interference. Let's see if we can get this text to show up somewhere else. It's interference. Thin film interference. All right, so moving on to part B. Uh, a film of oil uh, with a refractive index of 1.45 floats on a layer of water with a refractive index of 1.33 and it's illuminated by white light, uh, normal to the surface. So the white light is coming down onto the surface of the oil. When viewed from a near normal incidence, so we're going to view it from the top, uh, the film looks red with an average wavelength of 650 nanometers. An equation that we might use to relate the dominant average wavelength to the minimum film thickness is this. We want to state what property n would mean and why it's important in the equation. So lambda is the wavelength, t is the thickness of the film, not time, it's the thickness of the film. What would n mean? Well, they gave us a clue. They told us what the refractive index of the oil is. And you may recall that n is often used to represent refractive index, and, and that's exactly what we're talking about here. n is the refractive index of the oil. So that would be mark one. It's important because the refractive index will determine the wavelength of the light in the oil. Frequency never changes as light travels from one medium to another, but because the wave speed does, the wavelength also has to change. And the wavelength is important in this equation. So wavelength in this equation would be the wavelength in the air and we modify it with the uh, index of refraction of the material that it's meant to travel through, the oil. It's important because the wavelength changes due to the refractive index. So we have to factor that into the equation. 